One of the human behavior oriented theories that's gotten a lot of traction these days is something called self-determination theory. And of course, when we are developing our health promotion intervention, we want to ground, you know, our communications, our conversations, our initiatives in different types of theory. And this theory was originally kind of brought to prominence by Richard Ryan and Edward DC. And self-determination is really about our like innate desire to flourish, you know, that that human Human tendency to want to enjoy their life to the maximum and to do the things that are in line with you know living this let's say epic life and one of the main tenets of self-determination theory is that we are more likely to engage in behaviors long term like sustainably if we have more of what we call an intrinsic motivation so self-determination theory is very much about um, motivation and finding the motivation from within because when the motivation comes from outside we are less likely to partake in a particular behavior long term okay so a little bit more about differentiating between extrinsic versus intrinsic motivation because that's really key to this conversation extrinsic motivation means that you are motivated you your desire to participate in a particular health behavior or not participate in a health behavior is all about like getting some sort of external reward or punishment so you know an extrinsic motivation to let's say uh studying for your exams you know, it is focused on just the grade itself, you know, on getting that A plus maybe so other people can think you're smart. So maybe, um, you know, you will <laughs> finally gain the approval of maybe your parents or something like that. That is, first of all, that's all very human, what I just said there. And if you're doing that, that's okay, right? Intrinsic motivation, this is what we really want to move people towards within self-determination theory, because it again is more associated with long term participation in a positive health behavior so extrinsic motive sorry intrinsic motivation this is more focused on like i'm for using the studying example i'm studying because this is fascinating to me this is so interesting to me but uh, let's say with the behavior of exercise you know someone is exercising not because of like other people like commenting and praising their exercise but because like they truly enjoy it it makes their days better it like promotes quality of life things that are like personally valuable and just like at like part of that person that's more intrinsic motivation okay so part of one of the concepts that's important to um, think about with this self-determination theory is that we often talk about like motivating others and when we're motivating others, that's inherently an extrinsic motivator. Like if you are a personal trainer and you are, you know, your client is only working that hard just because you're praising them, that's an extrinsic motivator. And yeah, that works, don't get me wrong, but it's more likely to work only in the short term. Like what happens when you are not there anymore? Right? That means that they rely on you completely for their motivation instead of finding that motivation from within. You see the difference? So extrinsically motivating factors are less fulfilling. They're more likely to be abandoned. Um, and while you know, part of self-determination theory is you can't like actually give people <laughs> long-term motivation. You can guide them towards that or to guide them to find that motivation within themselves. And I really like this conceptual model from David Cook and uh, Anthony Artino. And although it's focused on like motivation to learn, it is applicable to our conversation about health behaviors as well. You could argue learning is a health behavior too. Um, but I like this conceptual model because it breaks down kind of the these different the spectrum I should say of motivation right from I have no motivation at all to participate in a particular behavior to I am let's say a hundred percent or almost a hundred percent motivated by factors that are intrinsic that are personal to me that are just like based on the sheer enjoyment of that particular behavior that I don't even have to maybe even think about it that motivation is just there internally intrinsically Okay, but as far as getting from a motivation to, let's say, intrinsic motivation, usually 
what we see is that a lot of people are along a continuum of extrinsic motivation. So like the most like external regulation would be really based on, and this is defined a little bit better on the next slide, this behavior controlled by external incentives such as praise or discipline, right? So let's say you're just working out so people tell you good for you that you're working out, right? Um, and what I'll tell you to that is if you're you know, working out and posting your workouts online just so people like and comment, that goes away. <laughs> people get sick of doing that after a while and that's not a long-term sustainable way of doing this that kind of moves a little bit into interjected regulation too where it's not just about the praise and reward of others interjected regulation is that like inner need to follow external motivators based on sense of guilt or pride so they're they're kind of related to each other external regulation is like praise and punishment is motivating it but interjected regulation is a little bit like identifying with that praise and feeling or punishment and feeling maybe a sense of like, oh, I'm a better person when people like my posts and tell me how good I am that I exercise. I'm more liked. So I'm going to follow this particular thing because I either want that praise because I identify with that praise or because I want to avoid that punishment because I don't want to identify with that punishment. Okay, so external regulation does kind of promote this introjected regulation, but with introjected regulation, you're getting a little bit more intrinsic. It's about like your sense of self in relation to the external motivator, right? The external regulator that you want to feel a certain way. Okay, whereas identified regulation, you are doing the particular thing because you value it for yourself. Right. So as it says here, it's a consciously valued goal. So I value exercise because I know it's good for me. Right. I value exercise because it promotes weight loss. And that is something that I want. OK, it's still a little bit on the extrinsic motivator because you're not being motivated by the exercise itself. Right. Or by the joy of studying itself. So it's still about kind of something else extrinsic to that behavior. Okay. And then integrated regulation, that's one step further along that continuum. And it's where the behavior is integrated into your own values and beliefs and ideas of yourself. So like, it's about identity really here that like, I am the kind of, per I am a healthy person and a healthy person exercises, right? So I value being healthy. And because I value being healthy, I exercise because that's that's in line with who I am. So identified regulation is like, you know that that's a thing you're supposed to value, right? Integrated regulation is you don't even think about it almost, right? It's just like part of who you are as a person that you are like a healthy person and you exercise because you are a healthy person. It is fully kind of integrated into your values. I am the kind of person that does this, okay? So it's still a little bit extrinsic because it's not just purely about the joy of doing the thing. That's intrinsic motivation. So intrinsic motivation is like, I friggin' love exercising. I just enjoy it. Like it's fun. It's like, I get to learn when I do it. I like get to use my brain a different way. Um, I shut off. <laughs> for me intense exercise is one of the only things that like shuts my brain off because my brain's always like Brr. so I just need to like calm it down and intense exercise helps me do that right it's the joy of the behavior itself that makes me do that that is more intrinsic regulation but you see hopefully how this is all on a continuum and ideally if we're grounding a particular behavior change program or health promotion initiative within self-determination theory one of the things we want to do is help people shift towards more intrinsically motivated or at least along the extrinsic motivation spectrum. How do we do that? Well, according to self-determination theory, humans have three basic psychosocial needs. And these three basic so psychosocial needs help to kind of find more of this intrinsic motivation or less of that fully external regulation okay so we have a need to connect 
So I love exercise because it helps me connect to my friends and family. So we can enhance the relatedness of an activity by promoting an inclusive environment, by promoting security, right? However, really intense competition where you might feel like disconnected from others or criticism, right? Or like, you know, shaming people <laughs> as part of a group into participating in particular group sports, you know, that's again a little bit like that is very much more extrinsically motivating. And it's less about like finding that like this helps me connect. And that's why I love this activity for itself. It helps me feel like I can relate to others. Another uh, basic psychosocial need that can promote you know, finding this intrinsic motivation is this competence, like being good at stuff, right? So this is really important in self-determination theory to like find the optimal challenge. Like if something is like, like if someone's just starting to work out, like maybe they've started walking for a month or two and now you're telling them, okay, you know, you got to run a 5k, that's too much of a challenge. But if the challenge now is, okay, now we're actually going to start with hills and we're going to start with that small hill there but it's still more than you could do before, but I know you can do it. And then when that person can do it, that like sense of like, oh my gosh, I can do this. Maybe I'm a fit person. That's not who I identify with. That's again, moving us along the self-determination spectrum. Okay. And then autonomy is like, <laughs> really speaks to this concept of heterogeneity, which we talked about in complex system science, that like people need to figure things out for themselves or find like what works for themselves, right? So we can enhance feelings of autonomy by like allowing people to choose, you know, what activities they like the most instead of telling them you need to start running, which is ridiculous. We should never tell people that we should help them find the activity that like they like that they've chosen that's relevant to them because they enjoy it. So again, more external motivators that promote extrinsic motivation are all about like how other people perceive you, other people praising you, or there being some sort of praise or reward or potentially punishment associated with that behavior. But it's it's not about like you just like loving the behavior for the behavior. Whereas intrinsic motivators, these are like, again, you know, for using exercise, which is what we talk about in this class, it's like, I just feel so good when I exercise. It feels so amazing. I love the challenge. I love like feeling so competent that I can do these things. I love that playing this sport, you know, helps me connect to others, relatedness. I love that soccer is like, okay, let's not pick soccer because that's not for me. I love that the Peloton is something that I identify with and that it's fun for me. I've chosen it and it's my type of exercise that works for my body, autonomy, right? So exercise high, enjoyment, the experience of mental uh, benefits, stress management, me time, like thinking of exercise as like a spa or like time for just yourself. Those are examples of more of these ex intrinsic Things that promote intrinsic motivation, these more like internal motivators. And a recent um, meta-analysis of um, experimental studies, so human, human randomized controlled trials, found small to medium changes in most self-determination theory constructs at the end of the, motive, at the intervention periods, right? Um, they particularly found that increases in need support, so again, supporting these particular needs that promote that transition into an intrinsic motivation were associated with positive changes in health behavior, right? In conclusion, self-determination theory informed interventions positively affect indices of health because that's something else that this meta-analysis did differently is they also looked at like which ones had an effect on, on particular health outcomes, right? These effects are modest, heterogeneous, and partly due to increase in self-determined motivation and support from social agents. So again, self-determination theory isn't going to like be the theory that tells us how everyone is going to participate in healthy behaviors. Of course not, because people are inherently different. But it can be one of the theories that we ground our health promotion intervention in because there is research to support its effectiveness. But just we always want to keep in mind that everyone's going to be different. And that's why we have so many different theories of human behavior, because we can like use different elements of different ones or ground in different theories to maybe produce the type of outcomes that are 
were specific for that population. But again, self-determination theory, one more theory of human behavior that is very relevant for our class.